Friday, January 25th, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, 2019. Guys, in this video, we're going to talk about the Large Hadron Collider over in Geneva. This is an engineering marvel, and from what I understand, it's the largest machine ever built. Here are some pictures of the doorway and their uncanny resemblance to the Aztec ancient Mayan calendar. They do have a lot of similarities with regard to design, color, just a very uncanny uh, coincidence, if you will, and I don't believe in coincidence. But anyway, I found an article here that's quite interesting. I've actually got a couple to share with you guys. The first one is from popularmechanics.com. It's dated January 16th, 2019. It goes on to say, scientists are planning a new particle collider that absolutely dwarfs the colossal LHC. And it's huge. And here's a picture of the LHC right here. This ring you see is the proposed new collider that they're wanting to build around the Large Hadron Collider. This thing is enormous. The proposed Future Circular Collider, that's the name of the new one, FCC, will be around 10 times as powerful as the Large Hadron Collider. Talk about an engineering marvel, a 100 kilometer ring and that would absolutely dwarf the Large Hadron Collider. And it is the largest machine ever built, and scientists have used it to uncover all manner of secrets about the universe. And I also think these things are used for other things as well. But moving on, uh, for all the time and energy the scientists have put into the LHC, plenty of the universe secrets are still eluding us. So CERN, the organization that runs LHC, is planning to build a new particle accelerator that's even bigger. I mean, how much bigger do you need to go? And I, and I say this with all due respect, how much bigger do you need to go to look for something so small? You know what I mean? It, it just doesn't make sense to me. But nevertheless, th that's the plan. The proposed accelerator has given, or has been given the future name, Future Circular Collider. And if it ever gets built, it will dwarf the already gigantic LHC. The FCC is a gigantic ring more than 60 miles in circumference. That's 100 kilometers. And, four lar er, and it's around four times larger than the LHC. When it's completed, again, assuming it gets built, it will be able to produce collisions 10 times more powerful than the LHC. The new, uh, the new collider was proposed as part of the ongoing discussion surrounding the course of the European particle physics in the upcoming decades. According to a report, development of the FCC will happen in three stages. The first stage will see the FCC collide electrons with positrons, and it goes on to talk about electrons with protons and then protons to protons. And it's impossible to say for sure what these discoveries are going to be. The large, uh, the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider, that's where they discovered the uh, Higgs boson particle. Now they're looking for something even smaller than that. But here's the thing. Unfortunately, we'll have to wait a long time for this to happen. The FCC still has to be approved. And once that happens, construction could take years. And I'm sure it will, as big as this thing is. If everything goes according to plan, the accelerator will begin proton to proton collisions by 2050. We're talking 30 years down the road, 31 years. And it could take years after that to make any type of significant discoveries. So they're basically looking for a particle smaller than the Higgs boson. Unbelievable. Here's 10 things from symmetrymagazine.org that you may not know about particle accelerators. Number one. Um, there are more than 30,000 accelerators operational in the world. I did not know that. I did not know this next one either. One of the longest modern buildings in the world was built for a particle accelerator. Talking about the SLACS, um, it's called the SLAC Kleistron Gallery, and that is a particle accelerator over at the University of Stanford along the California coast. This thing is a linear, a linear accelerator, which means it's two miles long. It's not round. And I guess this thing has been there since 1962. Unbelievable. Going back to this article here, number three, particle accelerators are the closest things we have to time machines, according to Stephen Hawking. And it makes you wonder 
building something this big if they aren't maybe trying to manipulate time? I don't know. That is an enormous, enormous machine. Number four, the highest temperature ever recorded by a man-made device was achieved in a particle accelerator. 7.2 trillion degrees Fahrenheit. That is a Guinness Book of World Records record. Number five, the inside of the Large Hadron Collider is colder than outer space. Outer space being on average negative 454.9 degrees Fahrenheit. The coldest they've ever gotten, the LHC, was negative 456.3 degrees, or negative Fahrenheit. So that's almost two degrees colder than the vacuum of space. Number six, nature produces particle accelerators much more powerful than anything man-made on Earth. Number seven, particle accelerators don't just accelerate particles, they also make them more massive. Number eight, the diameter of the first circular accelerator was shorter than five inches. The diameter of the Large Hadron Collider is more than five miles, and the new one that they're proposing will be more than 10 miles wide. They just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger, but they've been around for quite a long time. In the 1970s, scientists at uh, Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory employed a ferret named Felicia to clean accelerator parts. They ran a ferret through some of these long tubes that they couldn't get into to de-dust them and get some of the uh, particles that they didn't want in there out of there using a ferret. Number 10, particle accelerators show up in unlikely places. Scientists tend to construct large particle accelerators underground to protect them from being bumped and destabilized but they can also make them a little harder to find. For example, motorists driving down Interstate 280 in Northern California may not know it, but the main accelerator at SLAC runs underground just beneath Interstate 280. And that's this one right here that extends over two miles, or it's right at two miles long at Stanford University. And that right there is the interstate. So these things are all over the place. In fact, there's... Another one, we're at over obviously in uh, Geneva, Switzerland, Cornell University also has one too that apparently they play soccer and football above that accelerator. So these things are all over the uh, world. They were planning on building one in Tokyo, but for whatever reasons, this was an article that goes back to 2013, they were going to build one over just north of Tokyo in Japan. That was a linear one, just over two miles long, something similar to the one that's in Stanford. But for whatever reasons, this one even had a name and everything. It got scrapped here at the last minute, and it was just scrapped this year, or actually last year, just a few months ago, December 19th of 2018, the article came out. So actually, just a little over a month ago, they decided against building this one in Japan for whatever reasons, and went with building a bigger one around the current LHC. So incredible uh, story. Um, I found some of these facts about accelerators quite interesting. I did not know some of those. And there were over 30,000 worldwide. That's incredible. And they've been around for a long, long time studying these elusive little particles. And they use these really big machines that have an uncanny resemblance, or at least the doorways do, to the ancient Mayan or the Aztec calendar from long, long ago. Uncanny resemblance when they completed the LHC. But these things have been around for a long, long time. Looks like they're going to be around in the future for a long, long time, and they're going to get even bigger. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a super day, and be safe out there.